Okay, everybody, we're down to our last two days. This is it. This will be our last podcast before uh, the sale ends. So you can get these books for half off. Um, go to Amazon.com, do a search for Gospel Tangents. You can get any of these books for half off. This is your it. it. You gotta get it done by Friday. The price is going back up on Friday. They're 50% off. So act now. Thanks. In Sunday school, we learn that God created the earth in six days. Many people believe that this is about 6,000 years. On the other hand, science seems to show the earth is much older than that. Were Adam and Eve the first humans on the earth? What does Dr. Ugo Perego think about these topics? Check out our conversation. All right, well, the other topic that I wanted to talk about was uh, DNA in the Book of Mormon. Okay. So uh, you said you, you had a background in population genetics and that sort of a thing. Okay. So, um, trying to decide where we want to start with that. Uh, I mean, as, as I understand it, uh, if you look at it, the, I believe Native Americans have been here in, in America for, you know, 15,000 years. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, so some people say, well, how do they relate to, to the flood? <laughs> and and how, how, you know, wouldn't... I don't know if I should ask too many questions. Maybe I'll just stop there. We'll, we'll talk about that. And this kind of leads a little bit into bi- biblical literalism. Maybe you could kind of give your opinion on that as well. Okay, so um, the church, the first things we need to, un- to, to understand is what is the church official position or teaching with regard to some of these issues that you just mentioned. You mentioned two or three of them in a, in a row. And... Uh, and I understand there is also a school of thoughts that says, well, you should not wait for the church to tell you everything. You kind of should like uh, um, come to some conclusion yourself. I am more um, on the conservative side when it comes to that. You know, even if I'm a scientist and I like to push the boundaries um, of knowledge, uh, when it comes to things that pertain to the church, either you sustain the brethren or you don't. Either you kind of go with what they are doing and trying to see why they're doing things the way they're doing, um, and you accept that, or you don't. And in my mind, is uh, if the church openly has said that we don't have an official position on what happened before Adam and Eve, how Adam and Eve came to be as physical beings, we don't have an opinion or, or, or revelation or a position on evolution. We don't have a position with Book of Mormon geography. Um, we don't have a position with uh, the impact uh, of the population, of the uh, biological population of the Nephites to the American continent. Then you're leaving a lot of room open for everything, right? And everybody can be correct and everybody can be wrong when it comes to that point. So. I don't, I d- maybe I'm too naive, but I still don't understand why some people become so feisty, is that the right word, right, feisty, about issues where the church has, not de- has decided not to take a position about it. There must be some reason why they didn't, and I don't think it's fear, you know, I don't think they have the answers and they don't want to tell you. <coughs> it doesn't matter if Bruce R. McConkie says so and so, uh, and Joseph F. Fielding Smith said that, and Joseph Smith said that. If the church today says we don't have an official position about Book of Mormon geography, that is the final answer. Okay? That is it. Just express your thought, share your conclusion share why you know uh, what evidence did you have to um, about your ideas but don't impose them or don't come to me and say you are wrong because i am right okay because i'm sticking with the brother right and this is my position i'm sorry that. so going to your questions can have there been people living in america 15,000 years ago pre-flood time pre-adam and eve time and the answer is why not because the church does not have a position about who lived before Adam and Eve. We know through Revelation there was an Adam and Eve. We know that we are our descendants of them, but the church has never said there was nothing before because they, they haven't said that, right? And uh, in uh, 2016, and I will talk about this uh, uh, fair Mormon actually, 
But in 2016, there were two statements that came out in the new era. And uh, it's interesting to me that they chose the new era as a venue and that uh, they are not signed. So we don't even know who, who wrote them. But they are there. And the new era is an official church publication. And you find on LDS.org these, these statements, right? The first one was titled February 2016. I don't know if you got a chance to read them. I have not read it. February 2016, what does the church believe about dinosaurs? That's the title of the statement. In October 2016, in the new era, what does the church believe about evolution? Okay, short sure statements, but very clear to me. The one about dinosaurs, it says, you should not take the biblical account as literal. Okay. All right. Okay, so what is literal and what is not? Doesn't doesn't say that in the article. We just say that the account in Genesis are not meant to be taken literally. They're not meant to describe the, the methods or processes and the timing involved with the creation. Okay? The one in October about evolution says that uh, nothing about the creation of the body, physical body of Adam and Eve, has been revealed. We know that they are spirit children of Heavenly Father and they've been created spiritually in their likeness, in their image. But we don't know anything about their physical uh, happening, right? So, could it have been that there was some human-like individuals that, under the direction of Heavenly Father, as he is involved in the creation of the earth over a billion of years, there was some sort of evolving process that took, you know, that were utilized to create and have what we have today. And then at a certain point, a spirit was placed in these already existing physical bodies. Can God put spirits in bodies? Well, we know that, right? You know, how in the world a child born from a, a mortal woman receive an eternal spirit, unless there is somebody that makes that happen, right? We've, we witnessed evolution, every child that is born, right? From one cell, you have a, a being. It happened nine months, it's a nine month evolution. <laughs> it does happen. He evolves into a, and then when he's born, it takes another 20 years until he evolves into a full adult, right? So we believe in that process of, of changing form in, in, uh, over time. But at a point, the spirit goes into the physical body. And I've said, I don't, I don't know the details. I don't know if this is correct or not. But what I know is that the church is leaving the door wide open to physical, genetic, biological being, being around more than 6,000 years ago. It leaves it open. You can't deny that. The church leaves it open. It's not taking a stand on that. That's what genetics say. That's what the DNA says, okay? Archaeological evidence is the same. Carbon dating is the same. Fossil records, stra strata, um, whatever discipline you take and you look at it, there were people living on the earth, humans living on the earth for hundreds of thousands of years, 200,000 years at least for our species. Can, the, can all this data from different fields being affected by outside environmental um, happenings like a volcano, a catastrophe, a meteorite, a flood, you know, and everything looks a lot older than what it is? Absolutely. Do we have an absolute evidence about it? No. <laughs> Does the church say anything about it? No. So, you know, we don't know, okay? But with the, with the science today, we think that the Bering Strait between uh, northeastern Siberia and Alaska were connected through a land bridge called Beringia because uh, the temperature were colder at that time the sea water was trapped into large glaciers and ice caps north and south of the globe. And because of that, the sea level was lower, the coasters were more exposed, the coastal lines were longer, and uh, Bering, the Ber Ber Bering Strait was one piece of land. <coughs> we have archaeological evidence on both sides today of the Bering Strait that there were humans there about 35,000 years ago on the Siberian side and about um, 10, 15,000 years ago on the Alaskan side. We also have the Aleutians Islands. You know the Aleutian Islands? They are not connected, and yet there are mammoths remains on each one of them, right? 
So we know that there was continuity at some point. The animals, large mammals, and humans could have walked there. Was the was Beringia covered with ice? The answer is no, because even if you go there today, it's very windy, and so because of that, it's not allowed for the snow to deposit. You know, we just blow it away continually, and so it would probably be very, not very hospitable, um, not allowed for a very large population growth, but you could survive just like the Eskimo survive today in very hostile circumstances. You know, small groups, but you live with what you can find. Over a few thousand years, temperature decrease. Temperature increase. Uh, the, it becomes warmer. Glaciers start to melt. Water start to rise, and uh, you have an open corridor into the America, and there is no one there. Just a lot of anim animals that you can hunt and eat, and uh, no one to compete with. And so there is a population growth, and uh, in a thousand years, we have evidence, archaeological evidence of humans coming all the way down to Chile down in the Terra de Fuego on this other part. So big population growth. These are the ancestors of Native Americans. I hope you enjoyed our conversation. In our next conversation, I'll ask Dr. Perego why DNA of the Lamanites is not found among modern Native Americans. Their DNA would have disappeared within five or six generations. Really? Yeah. Click here to subscribe, click here for a transcript, and over here you'll see some other videos that we've done here on YouTube. We hope you'll use this as a valuable resource to learn more about Mormon history.